Welcome to Biblical Christian Content, where we like to keep the content biblical. Let's go. Eventually, you rest in the sovereign purpose of God, right? I don't want to, I don't want to break your world apart, but I will just tell you this, Jesus was the first Calvinist in the New Testament. As always, welcome to the channel. I really appreciate everyone tuning in. I have to petition everyone that's watching this video. If you desire to help me reach more people with biblical truth and for the algorithm to push me forward and put this content forward, then do me a favor. At minimum, hit the like and hit the subscribe to generate more push to get biblical Christian content to more hearts, more minds, and more souls. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Kind of defensive, I guess you could say. These are words that are helping Jesus get His balance. He, if you and I expect people to respond to the gospel, what might have been His expectation as a man? Would He not have had the expectation that all that He offered would have been most glorious, most welcome? I think this is a painful moment in his life. I think this is a moment that is disappointing, heartbreaking, crushing to him. I don't know if he wept, but he might well have. We don't have a record of that. This is a heartbreaking moment. So how does he react? Listen to how he reacts. Verse 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me. Wow, amazing. Well, what is He doing there? I'll tell you what He is doing. He's leaning hard on divine election. He's doing exactly what you have to do. He's doing exactly what I have to do to explain the same exact circumstance. Well, why don't they believe? Why don't they listen? Why don't they come? Why don't they accept? Why don't they acknowledge? The, the truth, it's so, it's so wonderful. It, it, it's, it's so evidence is so powerful, why don't they react? And where do you go? Eventually you rest in the sovereign purpose of God, right? I don't, want to, I don't want to break your world apart, but I will just tell you this, Jesus was the first Calvinist in the New Testament. <laughs> he just leaned hard on divine sovereign election and divine sovereign calling, and He knew that no one could come unless the Father drew him. Oh, all the Father gives me will come to me. The one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out, for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. In that sense, He's like us. We didn't come down from heaven, but His one goal in life was to do the will of the Father, and He knew the Father had a will, and that the Father's will would be fulfilled, and He rested in that. Verse 39, this is the will of Him who sent me, that of all that He has given me I lose none but raise it up on the last day. He backs up into this great, massive, overwhelming doctrine of divine sovereign election in salvation, that no one is going to believe unless the Father decides He must believe. Verse 44. No one can come to Me unless the Father who sent Me draws him." Verse 65, "'For this reason I have said to you, no one can come to Me unless it's been granted him from the Father.'" Here is our Lord Jesus. You could safely say the disappointed evangelist, the heartbroken evangelist who has literally demonstrated His deity and the validity of His message for over a year to these people, they will not believe. Where does He go for comfort? Where does He go to find His equilibrium, to find His balance, to end His disappointment, to deal with His sorrow? He rests in the Father's will, the Father's choice, the Father's calling, the Father's instruction of the sinner's soul. And He says, when the Father draws, 
when the Father gives to me, I will receive, I will keep, and I will raise Him at the end. In the tenth chapter of John, there's a very similar text. In uh, verse 26, again, He's always facing this rejection. Verse 26, you do not believe. You do not believe because you're not of My sheep. My sheep hear My voice, and I know them, and they follow Me. And I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of My hand. My Father, who has given them to Me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand." Again the same scenario. You don't believe. You don't believe. But then again, those who are the fathers? who are given to Me, who then become My sheep, will hear, will believe, I will receive, I will keep, I will raise." This is, this is a great statement of our Lord's confidence in divine, sovereign election and calling unto salvation.